Bill Belichick had a press conference uh, just yesterday. I believe it was a Zoom press conference. And the way Bill Belichick conducts interviews is something, it's like watching an artist uh, paint. It's it's absolutely incredible. The way he conducts it and controls the narrative is next level. He talked about how Matt Castle would be a good example of what they're going to do. They geared everything toward what would be best for him, just like we always geared everything toward what was best for Tom to help our offense. So I don't really see that changing when talking about the next quarterback. Then he was pressed on his relationship with Tom Brady, and here's the soundbite that came out of that entire situation. It would be, of course, impossible to sum up everything Tom did in 20 years into, into a comment. I meant everything I said about him, and, and uh, I'm sure we'll be talking about him for years and, and decades to come. Just curious if you guys had a desire to bring Tom back the coming season. Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, a lot of water under the bridge. It didn't surprise you at all, him leaving? Again, I think we've covered all that. <laughs> He did the we're on to Cincinnati <laughs> with Tom Brady talking. I mean, that is just absolutely beautiful. The way Bill Belichick handles press conferences is not something that anybody else could do. He's the greatest coach of all time, so he can do whatever the hell he wants, and he knows it. The we're on to Cincinnati has become so legendary because it's a press, a reporter trying to do their job, trying to get some information, and if Bill Belichick senses any weakness or any BS at all from your question, there's no chance he's going to answer it. And by the way, you're probably going to get shunned and made fun of in front of everybody. What did you guys... We're on to Cincinnati. What did you guys... Could have, we're on to Cincinnati. Uh, coach, I'd like to know where you got be- where you could get better uh, so this doesn't happen again. Oh, we need to get better on uh, first down. Uh, second down. Also third down. And uh, fourth downs as well. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it is marvelous to watch Bill Belichick not care at all about what anybody has to ask or anything like that. It's not that he doesn't want to give bulletin board material. It's that he doesn't want to give anybody anything at all, which I respect. And it's also one of the reasons why everybody outside of the evil empire has hated it so much because the way they act as if they don't have to talk or do anything to anybody. And by the way, they don't. Whenever you have a 20 year run where you win 17 com- or division champions, I mean, it just, it, it never, six, champ- six Super Bowls with another two potential. I mean, what they have done up there is absolutely remarkable. But now he knows that everything that he's going to be asked about for the next three months, four months, maybe even five months, is going to be about Tom Brady. And he wanted to get that conversation with over now. <laughs> we're past that. That's water under bridge. We're, well, it just happened like a week and a half ago. Nope, we're already past it. Well, there's nothing else for us to talk about. Literally quarantine, the whole world shut down. Don't want to hear it. Get the hell out of my face. <laughs> Not talking about the quarterback that I had for 20 years and won six Super, Bowls, uh, six Super Bowls with. And we created this incredible dynasty who's now gone. And it seems as if we almost... Uh, pushed him out, but I don't want to hear about it at all. That is absolutely remarkable. I love that Bill Belichick does that, and I would assume if I was a reporter trying to get information from him for the last 20 years, I would be absolutely miserable and pissed off, but there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Him talking about Castle and how they went 11-5, Bill's confident. Bill's confident that he's going to be just fine. Yeah, Bill Belichick has no worries at all. Tom Brady's gotten hurt before, and they have won games. I mean, they won, what, 3-1 and one or whatever when he was suspended? Castle won 11 yep. games. In his eyes, he's like, how come nobody's talking about all the wins that we've done without Tom Tom Brady. How about this? Ask this question. Has Tom Brady won without us? Hmm? Was I ever hurt for a season? No. <laughs> That's what Bill Belichick's saying, and I respect it. I still believe that uh, uh, Tampa Tommy and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to have a much better season next year than the Patriots. I think it might take a little bit, but we have no idea what's going to happen in the draft. It would not surprise me if somehow Bill Belichick wins the draft, just like he's going to win probably next year, and shove it in everybody's face that the New England Patriots are not dead. The dynasty's not done. This is Bill Belichick's time, and whenever he becomes 70 and 80, this is still going to be running it back because we got that old guy up in the booth making decisions that nobody knows about what he's doing what's that guy's name up there bob Kraft. no see the new england patriots fans have just shunned him out of their memory because they don't want to talk about it there's a guy up there named ernie adams who i guess is like rain man who just knows everything by the way potentially the guy that they give the videos of the signs to and he just be able to decipher them right on the spot with an immediate call down nobody wants to talk about that but i mean i think secret weapon i don't want to talk about the secret weapon why would we tell anybody about ernie you don't tell anybody about fight club but that is (laughs) i think everybody in the nfl is seeking an ernie adams 
everybody in the NFL would like to. That's why you see them hiring special ops people. You hear them hiring people that aren't football related to bring them in. And I think it's all because of the Ernie Adams, Bill Belichick relationship where you found out that this super nerd can turn your team into a super team. That's a magical tag team that no matter who they have playing quarterback, they know they're probably going to be good. But boy, with the Buffalo Bills getting hot and Josh Allen potentially getting better at quarterback and not statistically being the worst quarterback in the NFL going forward. I mean, maybe the New York Jets get it going a little bit. And how about them Dolphins at the number five Ooh. pick? Who knows what they're going to do? They just got Kyle Van Noy, and I saw that son of a bitch play on Madden yesterday. He's very good at football. <laughs> I mean, maybe the Patriots dynasty is over, but I don't think Bill Belichick feels that way at all. Dolphins possibly too. Cam Newton's still out there. So if the Dolphins don't get their, the QB they want, why wouldn't they go after Cam? Yeah, I'm excited to see the moves that happen for Cam Newton maybe after round one or round two maybe even up to round three, the conversation that sparks around Cam for the teams that weren't able to land a quarterback, like maybe it's the Jacksonville Jaguars. Maybe it's the Miami Dolphins. Maybe if the Chargers somehow don't get Air Bear or Tua, maybe they get back in a conversation, even though Orlovsky says no. Something's going to happen to Cam Newton after draft weekend. We just don't know what the hell it's going to be.